Good morning. I'm glad that you're here. Uh, these are different times for us, but you know, uh, people have gone through difficult times before. I was thinking about uh, the Thessalonians as we're going through the book of Thessalonians. Uh, they, things were so difficult, they wondered if they'd missed the Lord's return and were going through the tribulation. <laughs> David, in, in the Psalms, wrote uh, Psalm 57. He wrote, Be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. <laughs> uh, people have been through trouble before, and uh, God can see us, see us through, that's for sure. In uh, Psalm uh, 67 and verse, verse 1, God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us, that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee. Uh, we look to God for health. Uh, we certainly don't look to the government. Uh, we look to the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, he can help us. As we look in the book of Thessalonians, we're continuing there in, in chapter 4, uh, we've seen that God wants us to be growing in our Christian walk. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 1, Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. God wants us to grow in our Christian walk. Uh, we, we've seen that he wants us to walk in holiness. Uh, we need to uh, separate ourselves from the things of sin. In verse 7, God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. God wants us to walk in harmony. Uh, there in, in verse 9, he talks about uh, you're taught of God uh, to love one another. Uh, we have a relationship as, as Christians. Uh, we're to walk in love. And then last week, we looked at that we're to walk in honesty. Verse 11, that you study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that you may walk honestly toward them that are without. God wants us to have a, a good testimony of character and, and godliness to those around us. Well, the last part of the chapter, he tells us we need to walk in hope. Verse 13 says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. She says, Christians, we're not without hope. Uh, we go through the same things everybody else goes through, and, and sometimes more because of our stand for the Lord. But we have that hope in the Lord. Uh, we know that God has a purpose and, and God has a plan. Let's read on verse 14 uh, through the end of the chapter. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. God gives us hope. God gives us comfort. Uh, we have an understanding through God's word of the things that are coming in the future. Uh, you know, there, there is plenty of sorrow in our world. Uh, even Jesus at the uh, tomb of a friend wept. But you know, the Bible says there's coming a day, Revelation 21, 4 says, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. As Christians, we have hope. Uh, we're not just looking to this world, uh, to this earth, to give us what we need. Uh, while we still live in a fallen world, as Christians, we have hope and we have comfort. Uh, we can go to God and see what's, uh, what's going to be happening in the future. The next event for Christians on God's calendar uh, brings hope and comfort, as he says here, not fear. In verse 17, uh, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds 
to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, that's the rapture. Now, we're looking forward to it. But you know, for the lost world, the next event that they're going to experience is fearful. It's uh, the day of the Lord, as he talks about in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 2. And that has to do with judgment. Judgment is coming. Uh, the point of writing to the church of Thessalonica was not to prepare them for the tribulation. It was to comfort them. Uh, he says in, uh, in chapter 1, we've been delivered from the wrath to come. They were worried. They thought, oh, have we missed something? Uh, it, it, have those who died missed something? And he says, no, just be comforted and be aware that, that God is still uh, doing what he's always said he's going to do. You know, in, in Revelation 6 through 18, the, the bulk of the book of Revelation is about the tribulation. And, and the church is not there. He doesn't talk about the church because we're not there. We're in heaven enjoying the marriage supper of the Lamb. What a blessing. Daniel, many years ago, great prophet of God, recorded God's 70 weeks. And it says, these 70 weeks are upon thy people. This is for the Jews. And he saw that there was a gap between weeks 69 and 70. But you know, he didn't understand that mystery. That was something that the Old Testament uh, people didn't, uh, didn't know about, and that's the church. The mystery of the church. Those 70 weeks relate to Israel. And uh, the 70th week is after Christians are caught up, raptured. At the rapture, we meet the Lord in the air. And then uh, after the tribulation, at the second coming, we come with him. In Colossians, he says, When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him. In glory. In Jude, he says, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Uh, we have hope. Uh, we have comfort. And, and in this passage, I, I, I believe there's at least five fundamentals that encourage and comfort us. You know, this is an important part of, of Scripture. Uh, God used Peter to write uh, these words. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. God wants us not only to have hope, but to understand it so that we can, we can share it with others. And one of the first things you see in this passage is we have hope because of God's revelation, God's word. Verses 13 to 15, he's he approaches it on a negative sense first. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. See, we have God's word. We don't have to be ignorant. Now, I guess you can choose to be ignorant if you want, but we understand about life and about death. God tells us what we need to know. You know, there are cults uh, who say, oh, well, when we die, we, our, our soul sleeps. And he uses that expression here, them which sleep in Jesus. But he's not talking about our soul there. And, and we know that because of the word of the Lord. We go to God's word. And, and God's word, for instance, Stephen, as he was dying, said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Uh, in uh, Philippians, Paul wrote, I'm in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Uh, he knew that when his soul left his body, it went to be with the Lord. It didn't go to sleep. Uh, in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he says that we're willing to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Uh, so we have hope. But we're not waiting uh, in some waiting room. We're not waiting for someone here on earth to do something to get us released from purgatory or uh, anything else that uh, different cults have, have made up. Uh, there's even one cult where uh, the husband gets to decide whether the wife gets to wake up for eternity. Man, don't, don't go there, ladies. Uh, we have rev God's revelation. We can go to God's word. We don't have to go by our feelings. Our, our hope is not based on a feeling. It's based on faith. We have God's word. And the, the, the particular basis he goes to here in verse 14 is the gospel. Did you notice that? If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. 
Our, our faith is built on the gospel of Christ. Christ died. He, fil- he fulfilled all God's requirements for atonement. Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He not only died, he rose again. And then he uses the words, Even so, because of that, them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Jesus has prepared a place for us. In John 14, verse 9, uh, Jesus said, Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. See, we have God's word on this, uh, that there's life after death. Uh, I was just briefly listening to some so-called scientists talking about whether there's such a thing as a soul. <laughs> well, listen, it's beyond... Uh, scientists being able to, to discover it. There's no weight uh, to a soul. Uh, it's not just a, a spark that goes through your brain. Uh, God has made us a living soul. And you can be assured by God's word that if you know Christ is your Savior, uh, you have the hope of eternal life. God tells us in Romans 15, whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we, through patience and comfort of the Scriptures, might have hope. God's Word tells us what we need to know. We have hope because of God's Word. And secondly, God's Word tells us Jesus is coming again. Verse 15, We which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. Jesus is coming again. He said, the angel said, just as he went away, he's, he's coming again. And we don't have to worry that this life is all there is. You know, there's people who who worry about the planet, and they worry about their health, and they they worry about all these physical things. Uh, Listen, we should be concerned, and we should take care, and so on, but that's that's not our hope. In fact, God says this this world is going to be turned to ashes. It's going to be taken care of. Uh, But Jesus is coming again. And the Bible tells us that's imminent. It could happen any time. And it's personal. Verse 16, it says, The Lord himself shall descend from heaven. The Thessalonian church evidently was worried about some things about the last times. There were things they didn't understand. And so God speaks to them and to us uh, through his word. Uh, Listen, worry about the future for a Christian uh, is unnecessary. Jesus is coming again. Uh, He says those that have died, those that sleep in Jesus, will will come with him. Uh, They've not missed out. He uses a word there in verse 15 that's archaic now. He says, uh, those that are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. That that word just simply means proceed. Uh, Those that have already died are are not going to miss out on something. Uh, We know where they are. It's a common expression when someone dies to say, I I lost them. I I lost my husband. I lost my child. You know, as Christians, you don't lose something when you know where it is. Now, we we miss those who die, and and there's there's sorrow. uh, But the Bible says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Uh, One Christian said, when when you hear a report of my death, he said, don't you believe it? I'll be more alive than ever. (laughs) And it's true. Uh, in, In the Lord Jesus Christ, We have hope. Uh, We have his word, his revelation. Uh, We have his promise. I'm coming again. And he's prepared a place for us. As well, in verse 16, the end, he talks about the dead in Christ shall rise first. The resurrection is part of our hope. You know, in uh, in 1 Peter, uh, he makes this, God makes this statement, chapter 1 and, and verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. The resurrection gives us hope. Christ rose. And because of him, uh, we'll rise again. Now, this, this relates particularly to our body. As I get older... Um, I understand uh, when the Bible talks about groanings and so on. Well, listen, someday I'm going to have a new body. I'm going to have a resurrection body. 
and every Christian, uh, we don't have to build our hope on our physical uh, body and, and, and physical relationship to the world. You know, some religions promote the idea of getting rid of the body. Uh, one popular religion teaches that if you really get spiritual, you'll just merge into the universal oneness and you'll just disappear. <laughs> well, that's not, that's not God's plan. God made you an individual and you're going to be an individual for eternity. You're not going to just be somebody else. You're going to be you the way God intends you to be. Uh, Christianity, God values you as a person and he knows you. Now, the resurrection, the Bible says there's a resurrection to death. Death. It's called the second resurrection. You don't want to be part of that. The resurrection we're talking about here is the resurrection to life, the first resurrection. Now, between the first resurrection and the second resurrection is the tribulation and the millennium. Now, the first resur resurrection is uh, the dead in Christ shall rise, rise first. And it brings us to the rapture there in, in verse 17. You know, as believers, wouldn't it be exciting... If Jesus were to come today and take us out, uh, I was telling someone that the, uh, the building here is pretty much empty. I said, well, I guess everybody else is gone. We've been left behind. Uh, that's not true. But uh, someday all Christians are going to be taken out. That word rapture uh, is the Latin for these words caught up. It just means to be, uh, to be caught away speedily. In a, another place it talks about in the, in the twinkling of an eye. When uh, Philip was uh, preaching to the Ethiopian, it says the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, and the eunuch saw him no more. He was, he was just taken away. Uh, that's what's going to happen at the rapture. Who knows what, what you might be doing when Jesus comes again. It also means to seize by force. Uh, in John, uh, kind of a negative illustration, it says that the people came and were going to take Jesus by force. Well, uh, God is going to just Snatch us out. There's no power that, that can resist him. Some people believe that uh, that's a part of the rapture because Satan is the prince of the power of the air. But you know, I think uh, when Jesus takes us to be with him, I think all Satan will, uh, the only response he'll have is, what was that? <laughs> I mean, we'll be gone before he even, he even knows anything's happening because he doesn't know the day or the hour either. The word rapture means as well to claim for one's own self. Christ is claiming his bride, taking uh, the church, the bride of Christ, to be with him. It means to move to a new place. Jesus said, I've gone to prepare a place. He's going to receive us unto himself. It has to do with rescuing from danger. You know, in, um, in the book of Revelation, there's quite a few trumpets. But when this trump sounds, this is not uh, a trumpet of judgment. Uh, this is not a, a, a trumpet uh, like those in Revelation. This is a trumpet of assembly and rejoicing. Uh, like when the nation of Israel would, would blow the trumpet and, and meet uh, to rejoice in the Lord. Folks, we have hope. We have comfort based on God's revelation, God's word. Uh, God has said that uh, he has a place prepared for those who trusted him. God has said uh, he's coming again. Uh, God has said that the gospel is what we need for salvation. Uh, Jesus is coming, the resurrection, the, the rapture, and all of that leads to what we might call the great reunion. Forever with the Lord, there he talks about in verses 17 and 18. The dead in Christ shall rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Uh, with them, all Christians are going to be uh, joined to the Lord. We're going to meet him in the air. And the Bible says we'll ever be with the Lord. What a blessing uh, that for eternity uh, we're safe in Him. You know, in 1 Corinthians 13, he says, Now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. You know, people have often uh, had that thought be such a blessing, face to face with Christ my Savior. Face to face, what, what will it be? And we, we don't really know all the things that are going to be involved, but we know it'll be personal. It'll be face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. God knows. And God gives us hope and tells us someday we're going to be with him for eternity. Ever be with the Lord. Death is a, is a fact of life. Even for Christians. 
Now, there'll be some who won't go through death's door. The rapture will take them to be with the Lord. But for most, uh, we'll die. In fact, the Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die. But after that, the judgment. And we're going to be judged. Everyone's going to be judged on what they've done with Jesus Christ. It's either going to be eternity with the Lord or eternity without the Lord. In fact, in John 3.36, he says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. What a stark contrast. If you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you, you not only have life, you have eternal life. And God has promised you that. And he's given you his word on that. But if you don't know Christ as your Savior, listen, I don't care how good you are, you're not good enough to go to heaven. God says there, there's none good. We've all sinned. The wages of our sin is death. But God's gift is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Eternity with the Lord or eternity without the Lord? Let me ask you this. Do you think Jesus will come today? <laughs> That's an interesting thought, isn't it? Do you think Jesus will come today? Well, Jesus said in Luke 12, Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. <laughs> if you don't think he could come today, he could come today. And you need to be ready. And it would change our lives if we would enter every day with that thought. Jesus could come today. And it's true. It's imminent. It could happen at any time. There's nothing needs to take place for Jesus to, to come today. There's a, a song that, that we often sing. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. And the last verse says, When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Uh, let me encourage you this morning. Uh, you need to stand on Christ. No one is good enough to go to heaven on their own. Jesus is coming again. Uh, if you don't have hope this morning, listen, don't blame God. God has given us hope. God has not only made it available, he's, he's written it down so that you can know the truth and the truth can make you free. Uh, if you have questions or uh, you want counsel, uh, let me encourage you, give me a call. Uh, go to our website, fbcbrisbane.org. Uh, there's help available. And uh, we would love to be of help to you so that you can have the hope that God talks about here and the comfort that comes from His Word. This we say unto you by the Word of the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, thank You so much for Your goodness. Thank You for the hope that we have because of You. Lord, I pray if there are those listening that are not saved, that Your Holy Spirit would help them to see their sin, to have conviction, and, and to repent of their sin and, and to, to turn from their sin to you, to be saved. Lord, bless our church. Help us to be growing in faith. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.